everybody, my name is Misha Sooth and I'm in 6th grade. I've prepared a presentation that covers the kinematic formulas in detail. I hope you like it and now let's begin. Okay, now let's go over the kinematic equations. These equations can be utilized for any motion that can be described as either a constant velocity or a constant acceleration motion. They though can never be used over any time period during which the acceleration is changing. Each of the kinematic equations include four variables. Okay, let's derive the first one. So we actually got this first kinematic formula from the equation acceleration is equal to velocity over time, which can also be written as acceleration is equal to final velocity subtracted by the initial velocity over time. If we take time on the other side, this can also be written as AT is equal to VF subtracted by VI. If we add if we add the initial velocity to both sides, you can calculate the um, final velocity by doing AT plus VI is equal to the final velocity, which is the first kinematic formula. Okay, now let's move on to the second kinematic formula. Okay, so we actually got this from the formula average velocity is equal to displacement over time. So average velocity can also be written as the final velocity plus the initial velocity by two is equal to displacement over time. And if we multiply time by both sides, we multiply time to here, this crosses out, and you get our second kinematic formula. Okay, now let's go over your third kinematic formula. So we actually got this. Okay, let's first write our second kinematic formula down. Displacement is equal to final velocity plus your initial velocity over two multiplied by time. We actually got this by replacing the final velocity in this equation by the first kinematic formula. And what that would look like would be d is equal to a t plus v i plus v i over two multiplied by t, right? So we can just mix these two v i's together. So that's two v i. And if we simplify that equation, we can get vi times t plus one half a t squared, or your third kinematic formula. So by now you probably already get the gist of it. If you want to derive the fourth kinematic formula by yourself, you can do that by substituting the value of t from the first equation into the second equation. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the red button down below to subscribe. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye!